Moondrop QC strikes again, Bruh. baby. So Dusk, it's good, above mid, but it's a bit overhyped. Definitely not the new benchmark in my opinion because there's a lot of better options and there's a lot of issues with the DSP and the app, which we'll get into later. But to start off, I'm going to be reviewing the stock tuning of the Dusk separately from the DSP settings because the DSP is essentially just EQ. So for that, I'll be EQing other IEMs and comparing it to the DSP settings since that makes more sense, right? Stock versus stock, EQ versus EQ. Now, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Crin's sales and marketing tactics, I will always review the IEM and its sound as it is. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. And I think that does overall sounds nice. It's inoffensive, overall pretty smooth with a slight treble emphasis, well balanced for the most part, nothing really jumping out, but there's nothing really like special about it either. No huge issues with it sound wise. You know, it's fine. Above average. It's literally Drake. The Dusk works pretty well for K-pop and J-pop or genres with a lot of upper mids emphasis because it helps tame those genres as the mixing and the production in the vocals on J-pop and K-pop can be too sharp at times. So the tamer upper mids on the Dusk helps the track sound smoother and just overall less shouty. However, because the upper mids is not fully extended, the trade-off is you also end up missing information when it comes to vocal details. Singers feel softer, the vocals are, you know, very vanilla, not sparkly, lacking that last bit of extension and like resolution and air in the end transients of the voices. It's harder to hear the nuances in the end notes and the breath and just overall not very immersive or powerful. Like the vocals are definitely not the main star of the show but it's not congested either. It's just not as open and extended as something like the Studio 4 or even the Nova. So this puts the Dusk in a bit of a weird spot because at mid volume the treble and the bass is good. The low end does its job. It has good texture, no bass bleed but you do miss out on the vocal details and when you try to crank them up more, the treble then gets too spicy. So either you choose softer vocals but well-balanced treble or you can crank them up for you know more audible vocals, more detail, but then the treble gets spicier. Especially since there are a lot of like univariances that has a big 16k peak, which is going to hurt. The treble extension itself is solid. There's not much planar timbre. There's a good amount of detail in the cymbals, the crashes, the air, although it does get like sizzly and spicy at times. Again, <laughs> it's just fine. But it's not the end of the world, you know, it's nice for J-pop and K-pop at mid volume, but the real problem arises when you take a look at the competition. For example, the Truth Year Nova as an all-rounder is a better version of the Dust in my opinion for two times less the price. Now the treble isn't as detailed as the Nova but it's smoother and it's still fully extended and you actually get the upper mids and that final extension to the vocals. Or if you want a little more treble than the Nova then you also have the Chopin at $200 and then you also have the Cinco Tres for $100 cheaper than does the same thing as the Dust but more engaging in the low end and less sharp. And then and there's also the Hype 4 which is just a better version of the Dust, similar sound but more well-rounded, there's a bit more vocal extension and way better low-end texture, not as sharp in the treble as well, scales better and looks better too. Like I can keep going, there's also the Quintet which does the same thing but for $140 cheaper. So the main issue is if you're paying for a sound that's not special and there's already many IEMs that does the same thing, then why spend an extra $100 or $200 more for the Dusk when you can just get the Nova, Chopin, Quintet, Single Tress? Like what is the selling point of the Dusk? Like it has to be the DSP then, right? But then there's also too many issues with the DSP for it to be a main selling point or like another selling point. It seems to me at least because Moondrop and Krin knew the sound, you know, isn't anything special, it's an all-rounder. They had to find something else, something, you know, shiny to pull you in. And they did that with the whole DSP stuff. But the funny thing is, <laughs> it doesn't even work well. First of all, the app is straight up sus. The app for all of this is just straight up terrible. Like half the time I would hit apply and it wouldn't actually apply it. The other issue is that there's no app to be able to use this with a computer. It crashes a lot of times. Like I can't even listen to it without it crashing at least like once every few hours, which defeats the whole purpose of having it and using it as a selling point if it doesn't work consistently. And I feel like I had the app crash on me more times than Adobe Premiere does. Downloaded the Moondrop app on my iPhone and it almost crashed my iPhone. Also, the setting straight up doesn't work if you have an iPhone. The app only works on Android. You can listen to it on the iPhone, but you can't change any of the settings unless you're using an Android device and that app. You gotta plug it in, change the settings. The settings will save, you unplug it, and then you plug in your iPhone and then you have 
the settings. Bruh. Wildly annoying. So if you only have one phone like most people do and it's an iPhone then you miss out on the EQ and you kind of fuck like me. Which again it kind of defeats the purpose because the whole selling point of DSP is that you can EQ it to however you like on your phone. Another big flaw, yes, we're not done yet, is that the DSP settings don't work with a lot of like external DACs and amps. When I had this thing connected to my DAPs, parametric EQ that was baked into the, the DAC was not being applied. Which again defeats the whole purpose of having the DSP if you can't use it. There's also a small noise floor between the pauses and just more noticeable during podcasts or like YouTube videos, but not a deal breaker. You're not gonna notice it as much like if you're playing this music or a song like that. When there's no background music playing and it's just stop and start audio, I can hear sweeping sound artifacts. But real quick, this video is sponsored by you guys. You guys all know the drill. I buy most of my stuff in order to try and stay unbiased, but I am not rich. I don't have the most money in the world. I can't buy everything, so I do need your support. If you found my review guys and replies to be helpful feel free to become a channel member it's only five bucks a month i do regular giveaways there but that aside back to the video and the dusk itself is also bottlenecked by the amp on your phone the difference is noticeable even going from my iphone to my laptop without any external sources the dust sounds more closed in on my iphone more like in your head but when i switch to my laptop it's a lot more open and sounds cleaner so in order to get the full sound i would definitely recommend using an external source but then the issue is when you do a lot of them just don't work with the dsp settings so so then what are you actually paying for? The brand? The waifu on the box? Like at this point, why not just buy something cheaper like the Nova and just use EQ? Now I don't normally include EQ in my reviews, but since the Dusk is literally asking you to EQ it with the DSP app, and you know, Quinn said we shouldn't pay for tuning, right? So it's only fair that I EQ other IEMs to the Dusk as well to see how they do. And starting off with the Blessing 3, the Blessing 3 is actually better because it doesn't have a channel imbalance. Maybe because it's the way the microplanar is implemented, but the treble is a lot smoother on the original Blessing 3 and you know, less brittle, they're lighter, they're more splashy. Same with the Nova, with EQ, it's very close, like pretty much the same. Like some people are gonna say that Dusk has, you know, better technicalities because of the driver differences, but in reality, the driver difference, like having one more driver isn't gonna make that much of a difference. It's The change is more in the treble presentation where like the Dusk just like boosts the like 10k past 10k a lot more than the Nova, which gives it that like sharp feeling to the notes. That aside, you can indeed EQ down the 6K as proven on the Blessing 3. Like it's almost as if it's not a driver bottleneck, but just a tuning preference. Now EQ aside, as for some of the other DSP options, my favorite would be the stock analog tuning and then the bass plus is pretty fun as well until the app crashes and then <laughs> you can't hear shit but other than those two the others are pretty mid the stock usb is okay it's a warm tuning more low end but it does need more upper mids in my opinion because the vocals are even like harder to pick out now because of the extra low end my least favorite setting would actually be the diffuse field tilt like i don't know who thought this was a good idea but the scoop is in a super awkward place probably worse than the variation scoop so it's like what are you doing and then harmon is just you know Harmon. But yeah, aside from the stock 3.5 and the bass plus, the rest are just kind of mid. So overall, even though the stock sound is good, it's not special enough in my opinion to justify the price. Again, maybe only for K-pop or J-pop, but right now it's kind of overpriced when you compare to the other sets like Unova, the Chopin, the Hype 4s, the Chopin, oh sorry not the Chopin, I said the Chopin again. And the app is also a mess. There's QC issues, which is why I'm returning mine. And the fact that I can literally EQ the Nova and get pretty much the same thing for two times less should scare Moondrop. Actually, you don't even need to EQ the Nova. The Nova stock is like the better all-rounder for most cases because that's what Harmon does the best, you know, being an all-rounder. And if you already have the Blessing 3, there is no need to buy the Dusk in my opinion. Here is the text file for the Dusk EQ and just EQ it. Depending on your unit, you can either decrease or increase the AK peak more on your Blessing 3 because you know the Dusk, not the Dusk, the graph isn't very accurate because of the coupler and the you know the artifacts. But they sound basically identical and I prefer the Blessing 3 EQ more actually because you can actually you know fix the 1.2k bump with the EQ. So all in all this shouldn't be more than $200 in my opinion but you do have the crin tax and the moondrop tax <laughs> added on top so unlucky I guess. But I would just wait for like some other stuff to come out. Timmy has a new collab. I'm pretty sure HBB has a new collab and <laughs> I have a new collab. Or not new collab, I have a collab. But that aside, save your money. I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching guys and I'll see everyone in the next one.
Shout out to Jeff Young, Raw X Cat, Dom Q, Gadamino Baldo, Star Buccaneers, Joel Pink, Wipe Your Buttocks, The Skull Status, B underscore Urak, Mystic Spoon Attack, Cyborg, Oh Really, Walker Standard, User underscore YT underscore 158, Ernest, Contain Guava Juice Gains, Patrick Bell Cell Kel, Rosera the Calf, Perry Jat, Polly J, Mr. Gorillas, Anto Risotto, Gyung Sung Yeon, sorry if I butchered your name, and Tomate Past France. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys so much for the support and Sorry again for butchering your names. I'll see everyone in the next one. Bye-bye.